being good, isn't it? There's a, there's a moral element that we are reminded of, even to the place that I have to fight this discomfort when I see the word righteousness in Scripture that describes me. When I am described as holy, beloved, pure, royal, those things are sort of scary to me because I know that it's not actually me. And that is really at the heart of the breastplate of righteousness. You see, God has restored us. If it's God's work that's restored us, putting on the breastplate of righteousness and standing firm in the Lord and having done all to stand, we take these things and we put on the breastplate of righteousness, we are really protecting God's workmanship. We are standing defending what God has done, what God has said, the work that God has done in each and every one of us. Because on our own, it is exactly as Paul has already said in Romans, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's all of us. And so the dangerous trick of the enemy, that deceit, like the magician that he is, is that when we have actually committed sin, we are so very vulnerable. And it's that moment when the enemy wants to point back and say, look what you have done. It's at that moment that you better check that breastplate and say, is it all? Because that guilt that the enemy wants to inflict on each and every one of us is real. Now you can think of your own life in those moments where you had such guilt. You felt so awful. You can think of times where you have felt I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. People don't like me. Now, if you've ever wrestled with those things, this is the precise moment in which you need the breastplate of righteousness. Not because you are so awesome all on your own, but because God has done a work in you, a work of restoration. This word, this righteousness here, is actually, when you look at the Greek, it has to do with being who God created you to be. It reminds me of being genuine and real. And in being genuine and real, of course you recognize that you are not who you are because you did it yourself, but because God did something in you. When you are attacked, you will certainly have to make one of two choices. Will you respond in understanding humbly that it's only by God that you are made right, or the other alternative, that self-defense mechanism that kicks in that would refute anything that the enemy attacks you with in which you say, no, no, no. I am totally fine. I am good all on my own. And I don't accept what you're saying. Those things that are from the enemy sometimes come out of other people's mouths, don't they? And how you respond is one of those two ways. It's either to puff yourself up and almost to be like a facade of self-righteousness. But you know, a facade is very thin, nearly invisible. It's fake. There's no actual protection there. There's no armor. And so to stand against the enemy 
we stand humbly in the righteousness that comes only from God. It's interesting to me that there are other places in the scripture where righteousness is mentioned in terms of these, this attribute in relation to a metaphorical uh, item, if I can get it out. And it's, it's, it's mentioned as, the, uh, as a belt in, uh, by Isaiah. And so the belt of truth in, in Ephesians here is replaced by the belt of, of righteousness. There are other examples of armor, armors of light, and things like that. And there, are, uh, there's actually a very, a very close uh, parallel in uh, 1 Thessalonians. And I think that it's a breastplate of faith and love. And so what are we to do with these conflicting pieces of armor? How do you, how do you understand that today in terms of, of righteousness? And I think that at the heart of all of these analogies is an understanding that our righteousness is something that we put on. In the same way, and even with the same word in Colossians, remember, clothe yourself with, and it starts with compassion, and I know there's patience in there, right? We remember the t-shirt. But when we clothe ourselves with humility, we put these things on. That same word is used here to describe putting it on. And so, regardless of the analogy, what item it may be, we understand that we put on righteousness. We don't own it ourselves. In fact, I love the story of David trying to put on someone else's arm, armor when he's going to face the giant Goliath. And he tries it on, and what happened? It's too big, it didn't fit. It wasn't right. God's breastplate of righteousness is perfect for who you are and what you have experienced. God's voice goes with it, doesn't it? Protecting the very core of who you are, saying, you are my child. You are just the way I want you. I love you. And there might be some truth to, you are not good enough. And that's sort of the trick of the enemy. The trick of the enemy is not straightforward, this obvious lie. It's the subtlety of it. It's like the magician using sleight of hand and making something disappear or reappear. We are not good enough except by God's grace, by God's forgiveness. And so it's at that moment that we have committed sin that it's especially important to fall on the grace of God, to be protected at our core. I have that Colossians verse here I want to mention to you. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, there's those two words I was talking about earlier, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Romans 13, 12, I mentioned this early, earlier. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And that 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 scripture. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. When we put on the breastplate of righteousness, 
we recognize that it's not our own, but the gift of God. That definition again of righteousness is being in a state that we ought to be. A condition acceptable to God. If you have dealt with that lie of the enemy that you are not good enough, that's, that no one likes you, that you're a failure, I want you today to proclaim that you have God's breastplate of righteousness on. Proclaim today that through God, you are good enough. That God has given you everything you need for success. That the enemy doesn't know what they are talking about. And when you face the reality of guilt in response to a sin that's legitimate, proclaim it all the more. Lean into God's protection. I love that it says twice in the scripture to put on that armor. We take God's work, protecting God's work, <coughs> proclaiming God's goodness. The other pieces of the armor might be things that we lift up like the sword or that we tie on like the sandals or that we tie up like the sandals. But we put on the belt of truth, believing and rejecting lies. And we put on that righteousness. I pray that today you don't need this reminder that you know exactly who it is that God created you to be. And that you know humbly that you are who you are because God loves you. But someone may need that reminder. And as we commune together today, let God speak that love into your life as we thank Him and rejoice and celebrate the fact that He has protected us from the evil ones. Amen.